Talk to me about those IR changes that went through. Uh, I want to say a bit of a grubby deal with the crossbench there, a whole lot of mm. rights for union delegates, uh, the criminalisation, James, of wage theft and a lot more. Give us your sense of, uh, of how it's going to affect the economy because that's the big push out today from business associations and the miners. They say, or they're calling the government, in fact, yeah. economic vandals. <laughs> Anthony Albanese certainly wears the bad Santa image uh, coming, coming into Christmas with what's occurred yesterday. Uh, this I didn't foresee. I, I didn't. BCA, the Business Council of Australia, had uh, started making text messages to me and One Nation's office on Tuesday, Peter, suggesting that some background deal had been done with the crossbench, namely Jackie Lambie and David Pocock. And when the question was actually put to both sides of, of those independence, they flatly denied that they were doing any deals. Now, we learnt by uh, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, that that was not the case. This is really mischievous. I want to know what deals were done, particularly with Lydia Thorpe. When you mm. think about it, she was also instrumental in this. She was the fallback mm. girl. She was the one that if Jackie Lambie or David Pocock pulled out last minute, they had the numbers still with her. So what is it that uh, uh, Lydia Thorpe gets for the Black Sovereign movement moving forward. A lot will come out in the new year. I think a lot of questions need to be asked over this Christmas break. I, if I was a journalist, I know a lot of the good ones go on holidays, but I wouldn't be letting up on this government. Make them work across the Christmas period. Ask them the questions because there is some destruction coming for the whole country. And it's not just big business. I know that big business have been the, the most vocal on this, but I think a lot of small business are going to mm -hmm. wake up in the new year and say, what the hell just happened to our industrial relations laws? Because we're now feeling it. Uh, I know they're trying to cool the economy with spending. Well, this is the oddest way to do it. I think there will be job losses off the back of this decision to make these industrial relations changes. Mm. Let's go to the, the COP meeting overseas, if we can, Luke. You've got $100 million from Australian taxpayers, borrowed money, I might say, here. Uh, this is to establish the Pacific Resilience Facility, so it's a fund. We're also rejoining another UN-backed green fund. This is for developing nations, which I might add includes China. And this reverses <laughs> the position taken by Scott Morrison in 2018 to get us out of these funds. The Albanese government's gone over there amongst a crowd that are all pro-nuclear, saying that we're not going to be a part of it, but we're tripling our renewables. I mean, this is madness. Absolute madness. And, and isn't, isn't it fascinating to see that there were... 22 advanced nations, I know, know we've covered it before, but I just have to raise it. We are saying, let's triple our nuclear energy production. And what do we turn up with? We turn up with a bloke that only knows no to nuclear, not interested, not interested in investigating the fact that we have all this uranium in Australia, which has to be processed, I understand, but uh, it's just a flat no. You've got people over there with uh, hundreds of limousines and private uh, planes telling us, oh, don't fly anywhere, don't drive one of those old cars. And I think people are waking up, Peter. I really do. I, I, I just get a sense yeah. on the open oh. line this week that people have had enough. They won't be spoken to by elites like they were during The Voice and now during this. They can work things out for themselves and they can see the folly, particularly in Australia, where we could turn everything off and not make a jot of difference. Oh, spot on, mate. Absolutely spot on. I do think they're looking at this and saying the Emperor's got no clothes. Mm. James, you're not going to get away with it. Yeah. You were going to get a question here. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell my viewers, for many years I've been telling James Ashby he's too good to be just a staffer behind the scenes. He's got to get out there, run for a seat, get into Parliament. Well, he's announced that, or Pauline Hanson has announced that overnight. Um, so you're stepping from the back room onto centre stage, James. Tell us what made you want to take the leap. Yes. Well, I do, I do thank you for your kind words, Peter, and I, I do acknowledge the fact you've been pushing me for quite some time. But it's not just you. I don't know whether you've been paying your viewers off the right to head office as well and say the same thing, but that has been very <laughs> encouraging. I do Good want work. to say thank you Good to work. you because uh, without platforms like this and without programs like yours, I guess... Uh, I probably wouldn't have had that encouragement or the same level of encouragement. There's been stacks of business people here locally. You are so well watched in the regions, uh, Peter Credlin. I must 100%. just say you are just uh, a breath of fresh air, 
so many people pull me up, whether it be on the streets around here in Yapoon yeah. or Campton or in airports, and they say, we just love that program. You and Bolt and the whole Sky Network, they just commend. And we see you here regularly. We, we know you hear the voices of central and regional parts of this country. So we appreciate the fact that you actually give us a voice. And we've got a lot to change here. We've got a very stale, run-down Labor government here in Queensland. I would like to see the back end of them. There is no way in hell One Nation will do deals with Labor. I would rather drink arsenic than do a deal with Labor ahead of this next election. So Queenslanders can count on the fact that One Nation will supply confidence and certainly help a coalition government form uh, the next uh, government here in Queensland. So I'll be the first to put it on the record. We want change and I hope the rest of Queensland does too. And I hope they support me and my efforts here in Keppel. Mm. Wow. I don't think I'm, I'm going to let you off the hook from being a part of my show next year, even though you're a candidate. I'll lock you both in, Jess. Thank you for your time. <laughs> See you next year. Okay.